following that month, we contacted, because uh, he did flit about a bit, whoop. We contacted somebody who people in Sydney know, and you may know him here, I don't know, a guy called Bill O'Neill. Now, Bill O'Neill uh, walks about, or struts about, I'm sorry to say he's still a fellow Australian, but he struts about like a big cowboy. He gave us a set of proposals, not for the news of the world, not for the sun, which this new building had been promised, that's where it was going to go. And Tony will explain the reasons behind that. But for the new London Post. And those set of proposals, pardon me, were so draconian. There's a 12-page document, 10-page document, sorry, of that agreement. And the most important points in there were four. That was a legally binding agreement, a management's right to manage, a no-strike clause, and a no-close shop. And a no-close shop said, and it's all, we've got all the documents here if anybody wants to look afterwards, basically said that uh, you didn't have to belong to a union, and if you did, if you wanted to leave it, it wouldn't affect your job. That smacked at the clothes shop that we had enjoyed. After many years of hard fighting, we'd enjoyed the clothes shop in Fleet Street. That meant that was out the window. The management's right to manage. That's, well, there are ladies here, so I won't use the fact. If you sneezed, and the governor didn't like it, you could be sacked and on your bike. Tony will cover that in uh, more depth. The legally binding agreement. What the legally binding agreement meant, because following those negotiations, we did try right up to the, the 11th hour to negotiate our way into Wapping. That legally binding agreement was said by Rupert Murdoch to the four general secretaries of the unions, because the engineers are involved with us and the journalists, that never again would anybody ever take any industrial action that would cause disruption to his titles. And what he meant was something we've never We've got pretty bad industrial law in the UK. But what it meant was that if anybody did, he would sue them, not only sack them, but he would sue them personally. And what that would mean, that he would be, be able to take everything that any working man had who was foolhardy enough to sign that agreement, take everything he had away from him, including his home, and his possessions. The no strike clause, what has, what has any working man got to sell? Only his labour. The ultimate weapon that he's got, or the only weapon that he's got, is the withdrawal of that labour. That you would have been denied. So as you can see, those four items on their own, regardless of what else is in that document, no self-respecting general secretary would sign that on behalf of their members.